Today, we're going to dust off the old toolbox, delve in, and have a play with a little bit of CSS in Squarespace. In particular, we're going to be looking at buttons and seeing how we can edit the button ID to take a button that looks something like this to something that looks more like this. Okay, with that all taken care of, I just wanted to explain that CSS isn't as scary as it first seems. What I'll also do is leave some of the code that we've created in this tutorial in the description. And also, little plug, we've got Squarespace plugins that will do a lot of button styles for you. And if you really wanted to take it to the next level, you could try Spark plugin. And I'll leave some information about that as well, because it will allow you to edit any button in your design really easily. Yeah, not much more to say, really. Let's crack on. If you want an instant 20% discount from your first monthly or annual Squarespace plan, we have left instructions in the description. It is both quick and easy to claim your discount at any time of the year. Enjoy. So here's a boxing theme template that I'm currently working on. And we can see the button I showed in the intro here. At the moment, we can see that nothing's happening other than the standard transition. This is a primary button style in Squarespace. And if you wanted to change it from primary to secondary, you can edit the button, click on this pencil icon here, change the design settings. Bear in mind now we've got the three different button styles, primary, secondary, and tertiary. We can also edit the button styles here. So if I save that, we do have a series of standard options that we can choose from. So we can see here now we can change the text that are in the button and we can edit primary, secondary, and tertiary all together. Other options, we can now change it from square to gradient with fill or without fill. So we can just have that outline effect. I'm going to keep these as square images. We can also change the width and height here. If I add an outline, we can go back in and change it to no fill. And then the outline will appear depending on the option that we choose. So some of these features are relatively new, as in happened, I think, tail end of 2022. But there's no option at the moment to add in button type, for example, like a gradient. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to add the gradient style in here. So if I go to custom CSS, I've actually got the code all ready to go. I've just got it commented out at the moment. So the moment I put the end comment option in place, we can now see that that code's enabled. Alternatively, I can just cut it and it will remove the effects as well. As I mentioned at the start, we'll leave this information in the description for you. But what I wanted to work on is showing you how you can target this style on a single button. So we can see here that regardless of the shape of the button, the size, how many columns, width, how much text in there, it will match up that gradient style. Also, we can see that there's a little drop shadow, quite subtle, but behind the text. It's more obvious on text on a white background. So that's one thing we may want to do is to remove it off here because it looks a little bit fuzzy and messy on a white background. So we could target this button individually and then get rid of the box shadow effect, should I say. So if I was to create a bit more space there, we're now going to use this tool here, which is a Squarespace block identifier. This picks out blocks within the Squarespace area. So we can target this block on its own. It copies it automatically when we click on it. And now we can paste it into the style editor. And now we can copy that code there and paste it in. At this stage, we can add our curly brackets. And what we're going to do now is just copy and paste that element that we want to change. I'm hoping we won't need to change anything else. At this stage, we can toggle off our block identifier. So that's a Chrome plugin. If you go to the Chrome Web Store, you'll be able to download these Chrome extensions that just fit in at this bar at the top here. Another one we'll be using in a minute. I'll be showing you is the Colorzilla tool, which I've used frequently throughout my projects almost every day. So back to our box shadow, and I'm just going to see if I can just put a zero next to that. And now I need to just change it so it actually affects the hover, not just the original state. Just to break this down, we are identifying 
this block in Squarespace, which is an ID, that's why we have a hash before it, and then narrowing down to the button within that ID. So this Squarespace button element, primary element, is what we're identifying. But the shadow's appearing on hover. So what we then need to do is put a colon and then hover afterwards. So that only targets the hover state. And I might just put a little bit of a tweak in there for important. Okay, so the zero didn't work. So what I'm going to do now is just put that in and then make it transparent on this particular block. There we go. There's probably a neater solution for this. But in terms of getting this working in that just one-off case, we can keep that drop shadow on other areas. It's not applied to these yet because they're not primary buttons. And we can see it's working throughout. So say we wanted to add these into the mix. I've got two choices. I can either change the status of them. So we can go from primary to secondary, or we can go in and change those buttons to primary buttons. And we can see now that it's instantly changed it to the gradient button. So yes, we can have different gradient effects and different color effects, depending on whether we choose primary, secondary, or tertiary buttons. So there's a lot of flexibility there. The final step here I wanted to show you is how we can change the colors of these buttons once they're in place. So as I mentioned, I'll leave the code in the description for you. Feel free to to go ahead and use that, and then you can tweak the colors accordingly. We can see here now that we've got the angle of the gradient, we've got how far in it comes in terms of percentage across from the left to right, and also we've got the hexadecimal color options. We've got three of them, so there's three different colors making up this gradient in this button, so that's where we want to edit it. So if I was to copy the first color minus the hash key, I can now go to Colorzilla, as I mentioned earlier, which is a Chrome extension. And with this extension, I can actually paste in the color as shown here. So say, for example, we wanted to change it to greens. I could leave that color where it is on the swatch and then change it to a different section. Can then copy that. and paste it in. We can see already that it's quite different and we could play around with the different settings in this gradient option, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do next is copy the next color in, go back to our color picker, paste it as a starting point, and then I might choose a slightly different area. We might go to more green with yellow. So there's more yellow in the green and that'll give it a different style again. Oh, I put that in the wrong place. The colors do go from left to right. And now I'm gonna go for a slightly deeper green this time. So we don't actually have to choose to copy and paste the original colors in there. I just find it's good once you've got kind of an example of where you want to go just gives you a starting point. And we're going to paste that in in the third color across. So we can see it's actually got a little bit of a sheen on it. We've also got a drop shadow here on the text. So we can see text shadow here. So we could increase the opacity of that. Now that green is a lighter color, just to make the, sure that text is legible and stands out on the button. Not saying this is my preference, but it certainly does allow you to change your styling as you want. I think if I was to go back and edit it, I would just tone down that middle color again, just to have it a little bit more subtle, as opposed to having that silk ribbon effect that's going through that button. But have a play around with these effects and let me know how you get on. I'd love to hear about your creations in the comments as well. Catch you next time.
why not give spark plug in a try? This Swiss Army knife of an extension is baked into the admin area and can quickly turn Squarespace into a modern, engaging website. There's a link in the description.